This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah? nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. All of this took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Who are you? It's a pretty simple question, and it's a question that I got used to hearing asked of me this past summer. You see, this summer I did a pretty interesting job. I worked for Trinity Lutheran Seminary, but I worked as an ambassador to church summer camps. So for about two, two and a half months, I traveled across Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan to all of these different camps where there were kids learning about all kinds of things, Bible studies, and all of the typical things you do at camp. And my job was to talk with the staff that worked at these camps and to talk with anyone who was interested about seminary and what that process is like. And maybe if I'm lucky, get a couple extra people to show up at Trinity Lutheran Seminary the next year. My job title in general was pretty ill-defined. I was the first person uh, from Trinity to really do a job like this at the camps. And so over and over again, at each different camp I went to, I was confronted with the question, who are you again? Now I wasn't really on staff, I wasn't exactly a visitor, and so it was kind of tricky for me to answer this question, and eventually, over uh, the few weeks of being asked this, I learned that I was just pretty much going to tell them my name, that I was here from the seminary as a guest, and give them the credentials of whatever manager of that camp said I could be there. You see, what I learned was that on the surface, who are you, might be a pretty simple question, but there's a whole variety of answers that can come from it. And the person asking, who are you, usually has something in mind, something they want to know about you. You see, they might be asking, you know, just for your name. Or the person who asking, who are you, might want to know your security clearance. They might be looking for your job title, or who your parents are, or want to know how you're related to someone else. They might want to know where you live, where you go to school. They might want to know what grade or class you happen to be in. And they might want to know what you're doing in a particular place, and why. The question of who are you sometimes, even, has a different meaning altogether. We might say that question to one of our friends or family when they act out of character. We might even hear it asked of us when we do something that surprises someone we know. And today in our Gospel lesson, I think we have a character acting differently than we'd expect. You see, we come across John the Baptist. 
Now, normally when we talk about John the Baptist in the Bible, he's this crazy guy. He wears camel hair, he has like a burlap sack, and he's running through the wilderness shouting at people, calling people vipers, and he's just a really crazy guy. But today, John the Baptist is talking with these priests and these Levites, and he seems, well, kind of normal. So, who exactly is John the Baptist? Well, the priests and Levites in this story are trying to figure that out. And so far, really, all they've figured out is who John isn't. As John says, he's not the Messiah. And, well, he's not Elijah. And he's not the prophet. So who is John? John chooses, eventually, to identify himself not by any of those titles, but by his relationship to Jesus. And really, when it comes down to it, John doesn't have any other identity he can choose. John is someone who's seen a glimpse of God in the world. John says that he's testifying to the light. And as far as I'm concerned, that's probably the best analogy I've heard for Jesus. The light. You see, without a light, we have no way of viewing the world around us. And we're in darkness. And if you look at anything, any, everything we ever see, every color, every single texture, everything we look at, can only come into our eyes and can only be perceived by us as a reflection of light. You see, I think John describes himself through his relationship to Jesus, because for John, Jesus is the only light which lets him see who he really is. It's that identity that John discovers, his relationship to Jesus, that makes him so popular. It's that light that John has seen that got him questioned by priests and Levites in the first place. You see, ultimately, John the Baptist was a man who lived in the future. He lived in God's future. He was someone who could see the light of Jesus Christ before it came. And that's a future that just has to be shared. It's a future that demands the attention of both followers and detractors alike. John was one of the first people to understand his life and his identity and his whole mission as a relationship with Jesus. When it comes down to it, who John is at his very core has to do with his connection to Jesus. And that's the very reason that Jesus became man and came to earth. Jesus came to earth to give all of humanity, not just John the Baptist, a new identity and a way to enter into a relationship with our God. It's a way that creates a relationship and it defines who we are, not just as children of God, but as followers of Jesus Christ. So what does all of this mean for us? Well, it means we're called to live a life in relationship with Jesus. And that means living a life committed to the things that Jesus committed himself to. It means we have to care for the poor and for those outcast by society. It means living together in community and caring for those around us. It means getting a glimpse of what God is doing in our world and in our lives and through our hands. And it means catching that same glimpse of light that John the Baptist saw and testified to. Ultimately, living this life means seeing ourselves and the whole world around us through the light of Christ as a reflection of Jesus. And living our lives, working to bring that vision to the rest of the world. So that through the light of Christ, all might see the kingdom of God. Amen.